Yes, sir. Uh, it's rare anymore just because of how college basketball has changed that you get to play a home and home in the same year. And so just uh, strategically as a coach, I think it's fun to be able to um, not necessarily anticipate what they're going to do, but at least have some level of evidence of what they have done, particularly against, against us. And so uh, similar to what happened with Missouri, I think, I think when we played Georgia, I think four of those first five games in February are mirror games. And, you know, as a kid growing up uh, in the industry, that was all conferences where, you know, you played home and home. And so just because I'm old, I like that. We were just visiting with Savion this time a year ago. He went on a quite a run. His Is last that right? nine games, he averaged close to 20 points. What have you seen from him and what would you like to see from him? Uh, I love who he is. Uh, he's easily the smartest person in our program. Uh, has elite level character, represents our institution, whether he was on the basketball team or the student government. Um, I think he's all about the right things. I did not know that. I haven't ever looked at the mm -hmm. stats or right. the games. I think he's uh, trending towards playing really hard every possession. Earlier this month, he took his first ever charge in college. I think that's uh, maybe good that he took one or bad that he had never taken one, but that he took three in the first half on Tuesday night says that he's trying to do right. Ten rebounds uh, speaks to his trying to do right at all times. So. Uh, Maybe he'll do the same thing. Yeah. That'd be great. Yeah. Uh, any, anybody that could score more than six points for us, we would be excited. <laughs> and so uh, if it's deja vu and it's the Eagles got back together and it's hell freezes over reunion <laughs> tour for save, we're, we're happy. With that in mind, Coach, is Nebo capable of putting up 18 points a game or was that kind of just a, a byproduct of his aggressiveness against Missouri? Uh, he's capable. That's how I would answer the question. I, I think Nebo is really good. And as I've mentioned to you guys before, I think the previous staff did a very good job of holding him accountable during what was his redshirt year. I, did, I, I know I'm from the state, and I'm not saying that I run the state in any sort of way. I never even heard of Nebo. Like, I didn't even know who he was. And he's absolutely critical to what we do. And if he has the numbers that he had at Tennessee and Georgia, if you were in Vegas, you don't think we have a chance to win. It was the effort and the numbers by everybody not named Nimbo at Tennessee. But what he was able to do, I think we threw him the ball 11 times against Missouri, and he got fouled five times. Um, not a great free throw shooter. But the thing that helps Texas A&M is the clock is stopped. Hmm. So that means they're going to play against a set defense. And potentially, we're going to make a free throw or two, which is really good for uh, our deficiencies offensively. And then the other thing is, depending upon who you play, those, the accumulation of fouls really helps us as time goes on. And so, um, his emotional level and how hard he played was very evident on Tuesday. Was not that way the previous Tuesday and Saturday. And in defense of him, and I told him this personally and with, in front of the team, I'm sorry we have to count on you because it sounds as though you have never in your whole life been the guy that you have to count on as a player. But he's become that for us, and we need him to be – spectacular defending his position. We need him to be almost otherworldly rebounding his position. And then when he can get fouled and or make shots, if he can make three or four shots and we're averaging, you know, like I think we scored 19 points against Missouri or 19 baskets. And it's like, whoa, man, we are setting the house on fire. We scored 19 times. But when he can score four or five of those, 
I think it really helps those perimeter guys and it gives them creases and it gives Q an opportunity to drive because of the attention he receives. And talking about that attention, I mean, also, Eman, how big is it when he has performances like he did against Missouri? I, saw, I, I don't know if you were there. Um, I'm trying to remember where you normally sit after the game. But I think I mentioned this after the game. I'm a fan of Eman's. Like, uh, he's fun to watch. When his motor is turned on, he, he just plays so hard that it's almost overwhelming. And... I think, I think his skill set will improve in the spring and the summer. I think he'll continue to add things to his game. Uh, my wife refers to him as Bambi, you know, because he's just like running around and there's the ball and what's going on. <laughs> but he's always around the ball. And for us, you know, a fingertip changes everything for us because when we can get a dead ball offensive rebound and we maintain possession, as as hard as we fight to have the same number of field goal attempts as the opponent, man, that's huge. And at tennis, teams with orange, he's really good against. <laughs> and then uh, we were surprised Missouri's black and gold. I, I thought it was the best he had played, for sure, at Reed. Um, but he's just each month he's progressed. He's had a really good – September, October, all the way through February, mid-February freshman year. And obviously we're reliant on him. And I think as his career unfolds, I think those are reps that are unquantifiable in regards to his growth. Well, what would you say, uh, in your opinion, would be the, the first thing that would come to mind that y'all have to do better in this game against uh, South Carolina than the last one? Uh, we can't get punked. That would be words our players would use. Uh, they punked us. Uh, coach, I mean, every, uh, most, most people that follow college basketball are fans of Coach Martin because of his life story. Um, and if you play for Coach, you're going to have to fight. And we didn't fight. Um, I think they got 45% of the balls they missed on the offensive glass. Okay, well, that's being punked. That's how kids would say it. Uh, we could maybe polish it up and act a little better, but uh, they, they beat us and bullied us because they were tougher than us, they played harder than us, and they didn't give us an inch in any regard on either end of the floor. And um, I think that's why he went to the Final Four a few years ago. That's just, that's who he is, that's how he coaches. And so in order for us to have a chance, particularly at their place, the first thing that I would say, if there was only one thing I could say, is we can't get pumped. Is that a lot like what you're trying to do? In other words, that kind of style? Yeah, I don't know if I'll ever be as good as Coach. Uh, I think Coach will end up being a Hall of Famer. I think he's, um, I think Coach is 53. I think this is his, uh, this is his 13th year as a head coach. Been to an Elite Eight at K-State. Uh, I think he went to the tournament five times at K-State. I think he's been to the tournament once at South Carolina, obviously went to the Final Four. Uh, it's just, it, 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 you can uh, see it coming out of his pores, you know? Uh, an immigrant, a family of immigrant background uh, for him to be a Power Five head coach, man the utmost respect. And um, I said this the other day, I, I know I'm getting old. I just really respect people and have a lot of uh, transparency and people that go about this business in the right way. Um, Cause it seems like there's no rules anymore. And so everybody's kind of politically correct or let's just get to the next day and act like that didn't happen. Uh, Coach Martin is not like that. And so, um, I, I, I wouldn't be able to compare myself to him other than to say I, I stand at attention and respect for who he is and how he goes about his personal life and his professional life. So, so what, does what the team has shown in the last couple games on the offensive rebounding end, does that give your team confidence and inspire them for what they need to do against South Carolina? Well, I think what it does is, is they're smart enough to realize that gives us a chance. If we, if we shoot as many balls as the opponent, 
we at least have a chance. Sometimes it's because we do a really good job on the glass. Uh, sometimes it's a combination of we do a really good job on the glass and we don't have a high turnover rate. We just have no chance when the opponent shoots more balls than we do. And we have no chance if we're not um, garnering a high team percentage from the free throw line. And when you get offensive rebounds, not all of them, but some of them are going to be close to the basket and you have an opportunity to immediately go back up and get fouled. That's, that's where most guys get fouled. And so uh, I think at times when we are able to play what we call go-gets, uh, if we have three go-gets, in other words, guys that are going to the offensive glass on the floor at the same time, it helps. And when it helps the most is when one of the other two guards is shooting the ball. Like against Tennessee, Chuck's going to shoot uh, plus 20 balls. And everybody goes, man, he's shooting too many balls and he can't make any. I get it. And if you're only talking about Chuck, that statement is accurate. But if you're talking about how it helps Texas A&M, everybody knows when Chuck's going to shoot. And statistically speaking, Chuck is going to miss. And so we got three guys in a position to get the ball. And I think uh, specifically at Tennessee, that really helped us. And I think even uh, Tuesday night against Missouri, it helped us. Does that mean you want him to shoot more? Uh, I don't know if he needs to shoot more. <laughs> uh, we need him to have a low turnover rate. Uh, I don't think his numbers are necessarily what his skill is. Yeah. Having said that, uh, not I mean, you know, we've played whatever, 21, 22 games. So, like Coach Parcell says, you are what your numbers say you are. He's a sub-30% three, three-point shooter. But there's no surprise shots from Chuck, and that shows his poise to a degree in regards to everybody on the floor, including uh, the bench. We know when he's going to shoot. And so – when we have three go-gets on the floor and we're trying to trying to juggle that in the right way. How can I how can I buy save a minute here or there right before a media, through the media, bleed into the next live ball? How can I buy him five and a half minutes of real time and it's only one minute of game time? How can we do the same with E Man? Uh, Aku last week bought us a lot of minutes when Nebo wasn't doing much. That we just need three guys on the floor as much as possible. Can we play 30 minutes like that? It's really hard on us, particularly with matchups, uh, because it means Save has to guard a perimeter all the time. Um, but when we can get to 30 minutes where we have three guys on the floor that are go gets. It typically helps us not only from an offensive rebounding standpoint, but we're one of the worst teams in the country as far as defensive rebounding percentage. So it at least gives us our best chance on both ends. Thanks, Thanks Coach. Coach. All right. Thanks.